Thank you. We've been talking about our theme, A New New Year. God's got, a, God's got new for you in 2022. A new, new year. And we've got to be thinking about the newness that God has for you. We've talked about that God has a new thing. He wants to declare a fresh and exciting thing over your life. You talk about you're a new creation, you're one day newer every day, remember? A new mercy, new mercies are waiting for you every morning. That there's new wine, if we're a new wineskin, to take it because the best is yet to come. We've got a new heart and a new spirit. Last week we talked about a new covenant. We broke the old covenant. We cheated on God. We did all the wrong things. And God says, hey, you can't do that. So I'm, instead of writing these tablets on, on, on stone, I'm gonna write them on your heart. I'm gonna make a new covenant with you that Jesus Christ ratified when he was with his blood on the cross. And we're gonna celebrate that in communion uh, at the end of the service here. So this morning, I wanna talk to you about a new man. A new man. A couple of times in scriptures where it talks about a new man. We're going to go over two of them. There's actually three of them, <clears throat> and we're going to go over two of them this morning. So please stand. Let's read from uh, Colossians uh, 3, 8 through 10. But now you yourselves are to put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth, do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Amen. You may be seated. Powerful, powerful aspect of scripture here that I just want to get into and we're going we're gonna to dive into and we're going to take uh, dissect uh, uh, two of them this morning. I'm gonna go back up a little bit here. I know we read from uh, starting at verse eight. I'm gonna take it back a little bit to verse, verse five. We're gonna start at verse five, and it says, therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion. Here he's not talking about passion like, oh, I just love people and everything's good. I got a passion for this. I got a zeal. I got enthusiasm. No, he's talking about a wrongful sexual desire, a shameful passion. A bad passion, if you will. Evil desires, it says, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, because of all of this, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. I want to just stop for a moment because it really grabbed me when it said the wrath of God is coming. The wrath of God is, a, is coming. A very true statement. The wrath of God is coming. Talking about the wrath of God, I think it's used about 80 some times in scripture. Seven times in the book of Revelation, talking about the very end, talking about the wrath of God that's coming. His wrath is coming. Right now, we're very fortunate to live under, uh, under uh, the aspect that his love is overflowing. His love is amazing. His love is overpowering. His love transforms us. His love keeps hounding you, going after you, loving on you, chasing people that don't know him and wanting them to be found in him. His love keeps moving, it keeps moving, it keeps moving. We keep messing up and he keeps going, hey, my love is just gonna continue to overtake you. But he's saying this, and we need to hear this, church. The wrath of God is coming. Is coming. Finally, the chance is the last chance. There is no more after that. And I think we need to take that seriously in our own lives personally, but also in our world that you cause us to want to get out there and share the good news of Jesus Christ because there's a wrath coming and if you're involved in that wrath, it will not be good for you. It will not be good for you at all. The word wrath means divine punishment based on God's angry judgment against someone. It means to punish, punishment. It's coming. The wrath of God is coming. Right now he's loving, but he's coming again and he's going to be judge him, judging. We need to take him up on his offer of love right now and we need to get everybody that we know to take up 
that offer of love right now, right now, because there will be a time when you can't take it up. There'll be a time when you can't say, oh, oh, yeah, I meant to do that. No, I want to be in the, I, I want to make it in. I, I, I know I did all this, but I'm, I'm, I'm ready to change now. There's a point where it's too late. It's a reality. It's a reality. He goes on to say this. But now, when is now? <laughs> He's telling all this, the wrath is coming. So now, now, right now, immediately, don't take another moment longer. Right this minute, right now, right while you're sitting there. Don't think of anything else right now. You yourselves are to put off all these Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. He's saying, right this minute, put off the old man. Right this very minute, you gotta do something. You gotta let go of something that may be holding you back and it's called the old man. The old man with his deeds. You must put off the old man. You must put off his deeds. Well, what are his deeds? Well, here are some of them. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language, lying. They all belong to the old man. That's just what the old man looks like. He's describing what the old man's like. Having trouble with anger? Hey, old man, let go of it. You're walking in that which is of the old man. We're supposed to let go of that. We are instructed to put off, right here, put off the old man with his deeds. Put him off. Get rid of him. He's old. Let go of him. Don't hold on to him. Don't hold on to the past. I love this word put off. It's very, very powerful. Put off the old man, the old way. Put off. <clears throat> and it means divest holy oneself. To divest holy oneself, to divest everything. It means to despoil. The word to divest wholly, not partially, not a little bit, not parts, not pieces, not the things I don't like anyway, but it says divest wholly. Divest all of yourself from the old man, the old way of thinking, the old lifestyle, the sin. And when are we supposed to do that? When are we supposed to divest ourselves of that? We're supposed to think about it anymore? You know, Thursday after this big party, I'm gonna divest myself from that. No, no, he says, right this second, right this second, right now, don't think about it further. It never gets easier later. It never gets easier later. Right now, do it now, now. Despoil, I love this word despoil because it's part of the definition of put off. <clears throat> if you look it up in the dictionary, it says violently remove valuable or attractive possessions from. Violently remove valuable or attractive possessions from. The world has very attractive possessions that it wants to give you. The enemy's really good about painting a great picture about it. Things, well, this will make you popular. This will make you great. This will get you lots of money. But they're not things that the kingdom of God is encouraging us into. They're not values or they're, they're worldly systems, not godly systems. But it says to violently. How? Are we supposed to remove them? Violently. I mean, it's like, when, uh, I don't want to get rid of you, but I'm a pretty little, oh, the pretty sin. I don't want to get rid of you. No, it says violently, throw it out now. I mean, just get it out. We're sitting there petting it. We like that sound. The sound you should like about sin, you should hear it going. Get it out. Violently throw it out of your life. It's what it's saying, violently remove it. But it's so attractive, it's so pretty. Get it out. Violently remove it. To spoil it. It also means to take off or strip off clothing. Now, here's another thing I thought was interesting. 
To take off or strip off clothing, that's, that's another definition of this word put off. And I, and I thought about this and I thought, to do this is not supposed to be hard or arduous. How many people here, when you go home at night and you think, oh my gosh, I have to take off my clothes and get ready for bed. That's going to be hard. <sighs> Maybe if you're old, getting your socks off are, but... I'm saying to you, go, oh my gosh. <laughs> ah! Ow! I can't, oh, it hurt! I mean, nobody's doing that, are they? It's not hard to take it off. It, it's, not, it's not hard to, to, to get rid of it. it it's, it's really easy. Yeah, I mean, just, okay, I made that one. Okay, I made that one. Now I gotta pull the sleeve. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Whew, got it off. Ooh, pull it, pull it, pull it. Oh, got it off. All right, so. I'm saying that to put off things, we, we make them so hard, like it's gonna be so difficult in my life if I do that, but it likens it to taking off your clothing. Whoa. To take it. <laughs> I'm not talking total disclosure here. just my jacket, all right? <laughs> but it's trying to say, it's like when you put off, it's like taking off a piece of clothing, a coat, a jacket. It's not supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be simple. Most everybody here can. I mean, most kids know how to put their, you know, how to take off their, their jacket or put it back on. I mean, they, 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 they learn those things. I mean, if you're 27 years old and you can't take off your jacket, something's wrong with you, all right? You missed something in, in, when you were seven, or when you were about a year or two years old. <clears throat> Jesus made it easy to change our life. Jesus made it easy for you to change your life. He made it easy to take off that garment. He made it easy to take off the old clothing. That what we're supposed to put off, this old, this old man, we're supposed to put him off. The word man here just means a human being, normally an adult. It doesn't mean a man-man. It means either man or a woman. It's just talking about somebody older, a mature person, somebody that's not just a little teeny kid. The word old, I like this. We're supposed to put off this old man, and the word old means antique. Not recent, watch it. <laughs> Not recent, <laughs> worn out. It's like those jeans that have all the holes right. No, 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 I guess those are new. Those are new. <laughs> they cost more to have them worn out. Antique, not recent, worn out. And I love this one from the lexicon. Now hear this, he's talking about the old man, the old way, the old lifestyle, right? The old here, it means pertaining to that which is old, obsolete, and hence inferior. The old is inferior. He's saying get rid of the old, which is inferior. The old man is inferior to the new man. The old man, the old lifestyle, is inferior to all that God wants you to have as the new man you're supposed to be in Christ. It's inferior. Why would you want an inferior product in your life, why would you want all of this when you can have this? Why this inferior stuff when you can have the best? It's like, why would you eat cat food when you can eat steak? Mashed potatoes, gravy, you, I mean, whatever you, all of those wonderful things. Why would you be sitting here eating cat food? Something old, something, when, when you could be having something new. We're supposed to get rid of the old. Get rid of the old you. It's inferior to the new man you are in Jesus Christ. The word deeds here is, is talking about this old man, the old, the old man with his deeds, were to put them off. Those deeds are the, the old lifestyle. The way you used to act when something happened. The way you used to get angry. The way you, you used to blaspheme. The way you used to 
share things that maybe weren't necessarily totally true or maybe that hurt somebody else. Maybe you damaged somebody else and just kind of flew off your tongue. He's saying, that's the old you. That's the old lifestyle. We're supposed to violently remove and totally divest yourself from this old man, this old life, this old way of living. That's what the scripture is saying. Totally, wholly divest yourself from the old you, what you used to be before you were made new in Christ. If you, let me say it this way. Remember, <clears throat> and also let me remind you, uh, the wrath of God is coming. The wrath of God is coming. Oh, it won't happen in my lifetime. Well, I don't know. Everybody says that. But if we're not the new man, and we're walking in the, as the old man, the wrath of God is coming. If you don't put off the old man, God will be put off by you not putting it off. As Pastor Joe would say, something like that, I think. Are we putting it off? Are we really putting it off? Or have we, have we given it a house to dwell in and we've adding close to it? Are we taking it off or putting it on? How? How do we put it off? Romans 6.6. 6. Knowing this, that our old man, this old man we're supposed to put off, was crucified with him. The old man was crucified with him that the body of sin may be done away with. The old way, the old lifestyle, the old you, the old stuff, the way you used to. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're supposed to put it off and then what do we do? We put off this old one but Christ made you a new man. Let's continue on. Since you put off the old man with his deeds, assuming that we have put it off, we put it off, and have put on the new man. Have put on the new man. I love this word put on. This word put on. In duo. In duo. Do you know where else you find this word in duo? When Jesus said, Carry in the city of Jerusalem until you are in duo yeah. with power from on high. I'm going to clothe you with the power. The word here means uh, sinking into a garment, investing with clothing. It's funny how they liken this whole thing to clothing. Put it off, like taking off your jacket, taking off your, your, the article of clothing, and, and put, put something else in. It's like you're being clothed with it. It's very interesting that if you remember Elijah and Elisha, that when he left, he left his mantle. It was a piece of clothing. Elijah, it was a powerful thing. When Elisha put it on, all of a sudden the power of God came upon him. You see, when you put on this mantle, this new clothing, this new man, with it comes a power and authority to walk and do the things that God has called you to do. You want this old junk that has no power, the old man, or do you want to take it off, put on the new, and have the power and the anointing and the authority to do everything that God has called you to do? You don't get that walking in the old man. You don't get that in your old clothes. You don't get that in hand-me-downs. You get that by putting on the new, the new, the new, sinking into a garment. Invest with clothing. God wants you to put on his mantle for your life and it comes with authority and with power. Now, I, I, when I think about putting on, putting this on, <clears throat> I have a story to, to share. My, um, my wife, a couple years ago, gave me this vest. She gave me this vest and, I, and we were at, we were at uh, uh, where were we at, South Fork, opening up my present. And I opened it up and I go, oh, that looks great, man. I can wear that on Sunday. Great vest. <clears throat> and so I was looking at it and I thought, oh, this is great. I'm, I'm, thank you for giving that to me, hon. And I look at the tag over here. And the tag says, um, little stuff here. Then it says, 4XL. 4XL. I go, my Lord, honey, how big do you think I am? 
I'm like an extra large, all right? But it says 4XL. And I'm going, why would you? But the guy on the phone said it will fit you. I told him how tall you were and all that. I go, 4XL? I mean, that is just, that's crazy. Why would you get me 4XL? And so I'm going, okay, well, it's gonna, maybe I can take it in a little bit. So then <clears throat> I went to put it on. And so I put it on. I was all excited. I'm going, well, I know it's 4XL, but I went to put it on. <laughs> am, I, am I a 5XL? <laughs> the crazy thing was, oh my gosh, and I was laughing and laughing. The crazy thing, though, was here we are in this restaurant. Christian, <laughs> Christian comes over to me. Huh? Is he up there? Christian comes over to me. He sticks his, he goes, no, no, dad, I think it's going to look good on you. He sticks his knee right in my chest like that, and he starts to pull it like, <laughs> the whole restaurant is looking at us like, what the heck's going on? And we are busting up, and I am laughing so hard. He's got his knee right in my chest. He goes, oh, I think we can close it. Get in there. We'll just button that first one. <laughs> I'm going, oh my gosh. We laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> I don't think it's, I, I think it's about a 7XL on I I'm going to need. The thing I want to say is this. What God wants to put on you is not a one size fits all. What God wants to put on you is tailor made to fit you. It's tailor made. You don't have to put on somebody else's anointing. You don't have to put on somebody else's the way that they do it. You don't have to put on somebody, well, he's doing that and that and that. I'll never mount up. No, no, no. God's got something for you that will literally fit you. This doesn't fit me, but <laughs> unless it's a new style I'm going to wear. I'm going to get sport. Yeah, just. So, but this, this is a new jacket. This feels good. Oh my, oh my, look at that, huh? Is my collar on there good? Okay. Look, at, I, it's so new, it still has the tags on it. Still has, I did not pay that price for it. I want you to know that. I never pay that price. It's, it's, it's new. How many of you like when you look at your closet and go, old, 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 I'll put that on, and you have something brand over here, and you go, no, I don't want to wear that. You're going, I want to wear that. I want to wear what's new. I want to wear something that's new. And God wants to put something on you that's new, that's tailor-made just for you, something you will enjoy, something you will fit into, something that will change your life in such a way you're going, I like the new me. I like the new man that I have become wearing what God has called me to wear, putting on his authority, putting on his power, putting on this Holy Spirit, walking as a new man with new power and authority to do everything that he's called me to do and looking good. I guarantee you this, you're going to like the way you look. You're going to like the way you look. Man, you don't make junk. You don't get something from God going, oh, Lord, do I have to wear this? You get something going, oh, man, I get to wear this. How exciting. How awesome. How wonderful. The word new here means new, youthful, fresh, regenerate. It means this. It comes from the lexicon, this word new. It means pertaining to that which is new or recent and, I thought it interesting, <laughs> hence superior to that which is old. Isn't it interesting the definition of one is about inferior and the definition of new is about superior? The old is inferior. The new is superior. The new man is superior to the inferior old man. Why wouldn't we want to put it on? Why wouldn't we want to walk in it? Why wouldn't we want to enjoy it? So what man is leading you? The old man or the new man? What clothes are you wearing? What's coming out of your mouth? What are you saying? How are you? What do you do with the new you? God has made provision for the new man. You must put off the old man and put on the new man it is 100 percent 
your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. When you look at your closet in the morning, you get up, you're putting something on. Right then, you need to think in your head, I'm putting on the new man. I'm choosing the new clothes. I'm choosing the new me. I'm choosing to be kind. I'm choosing to be, to be uh, helpful. I'm choosing to be an encourager. I'm choosing not to be pessimistic. I'm choosing to be what God wants me to be. We must choose that. And then it goes on to say, the new man who is renewed in knowledge. This new man is renewed in knowledge. The word renewed here means to renovate. The lexicon says this, to cause something to become new and different with the implication of being superior. It's about this being superior. Not in an arrogant way, but in a way of going, you're inferior or superior. What do you want? You want to walk? A walk that's inferior to what God's called you to be or one that's superior? Because he's going to enable you. Now, it's not because you're so good. Remember this. You didn't make this jacket. He did. He put these on you. So it's not like, hey, ah, look at me, man, I'm really good. No, you ain't nothing without God. You ain't nothing without the Holy Spirit. But he's such a great God, he has clothed you with great stuff. So we need to thank him every single day for what he's given us. Renewed, renewed to renovate, to cause something to become new and different with the implication of becoming superior. I love that definition. I love what it is. I think about renovation, renovate. Devin Owens is renovating a house, her and Amir. I would say Amir too, but Amir doesn't know what's going on. Only Devin knows what's going on. <laughs> There's things that happen in a family where the guy goes, yes, honey, yep, yep, that sounds good. Let's put it there, yep. I'm not, that's not bad, I'm not trying to say that bad, I'm just saying that. <laughs> it is what it is. No, because she's, she's an interior designer. Oh my gosh, why wouldn't you want her to figure all of this out? And she's amazing at it. She's absolutely amazing at it. She's re re uh, renovating the old home that they bought to make it new so it can be inferior. No, of course not. I spent all this money so it's inferior now. No, I made it so it'd be superior. I'm renovating to make it superior to the old house that it was. This new house is gonna be superior to the old house. Now it's interesting, they have some people working on that house. Call them the Holy Spirit, guys. Because they're always working on your house, your wardrobe. The Holy Spirit is always working. And this one's called Revival Home Performance. And let me tell you something that happens when you renovate a home. When you renovate. When, when Revival Home Performance comes in order to renovate your home, do you know what they come with? Right here. They come with a sledgehammer and one of these things. These things are so cool, man. I love to destroy stuff. This thing, you can beat on it. You can beat a wall down. You can pull all the nails out. This thing, every, you should all have one of these. Down at Home Depot, no. They're, they're great for destroying stuff. I mean, it's great for destroying stuff. And you have to understand that if you're gonna put new there, you have to demolish the demolition of the old so you can construct the new. You have to demolish something. You have to beat it up. You have to knock it out. And honestly, it's fun. You should get used to just destroying things in your life that aren't good. Boom. Oh, that was so much fun. Instead, no, please don't go. I understand. I got a few things there too I don't want to go, but God wants us new. God wants us new. But you have to demolish old to gain new. Demolish the old and I'll tell you what, you go through that place today, there's new walls, there's new stuff. It doesn't even look anything like the old house it was. It's a brand new house, a brand new way. And hopefully one of these days I'll get windows for it. <laughs> 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 
Boy, you have the supplies now are really hard to get. So it's, when are they supposed to come in March, April, May, June, something like that? We don't know. <laughs> they, this is what ordered like six months ago. Anyway, God's not like that. He will show up on time. <laughs> That's a worldly problem, not a godly problem. There is, the supply chain with God is very easy. It's, it's, it, it, everything runs through the Holy Spirit and he's very good. He's really good. He'll get what you need when you need it at right the right time, all right? Amen. He's got it there. Their truckers don't go on strike. Their truckers, they got plenty of them. <laughs> Their offshore men are the best in the business. They'll get it right to you. <clears throat> it goes on. Who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. According to the image of him who created him. The new man, you understand? According to the image of him who created him. When we put this on, do you know who you start looking like? You start looking like your father. <laughs> your dad wore that. He looked just like our dad, the Lord himself. We start looking more and more like him when we start dressing more and more like him, putting on the authority and putting on the power that looks more and more every day like him. We talked about it. I want to look more and more like Jesus. If less of me means more of you, take everything. Demolish it. Get rid of it. I want to be what you want me to be, Lord. I want to look like you. For there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, the elect here means the favorite, the chosen ones, holy and beloved, put on. Since you have this new man, you have this new jacket, you have this new clothing, guess what comes with it? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. All of these are benefits because you're putting on what Christ has has provided for you to put on. You're endued with power with this clothing from on high. You know what's gonna allow you to be? Kind. We need more kindness in this world. Everybody's quick to judge, quick to have an opinion, quick to point a finger. Who's quick to be kind? You know, if you could find anything about Jesus, look at anything that he did in all of his walk, one of the words you'd have to say is, he just was so kind to everybody. The lady taken in adultery. The little children. I mean, everybody. The Pharisees he had a little quarrel with. Those religious ones that thought they were great. Arrogant and proud. Everybody. He's just so kind. Everybody who met him couldn't forget him. What do they say? They'll never know what you said, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. He made people feel like a million bucks. <sighs> That's what we need to do, church, in our world today. Be kind. Do something kind every day. Do something that's kind, that's Jesus-like every single day. Take a moment, help a person, open a door. Just something that's kind. I like it when a lady's got her basket and she's taking it back. I'll take that back in for you. It's so simple. I'm going that way anyway. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'll take care of that. There's just so many easy things to do that all of a sudden make the world a kinder place to live in. And we as Christians should find all the kind things to do and start doing them. <clears throat> the other scripture. In Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. I'll go through it quickly. But you have not so learned... Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, again, put off concerning the former conduct, the word conduct here means behavior, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust. We've already talked about the old man, but here he's saying this old man, if you do nothing with him, if you do nothing with the old man, if you don't let him off, if you don't put on a new man, if you just let him live in your life, the rest of your life, let me tell you what happens to the old man. He will automatically grow corrupt. That's what old men do. I'm talking about spiritually here, not to bring them. <laughs> Jeez. The word put off, put away, cast off. Put off the old man. Put him away. 
Put him away. Take him to the home. Put him away. All right? Put him away and don't let him come out to play. Put the old man away. Don't let him come out to play ever. Go to your room. Oh, how long? Forever. That's it. That's done. You're, you're in the corner. It means to cease doing what one is accustomed to doing, to stop, to cease. Grows corrupt. That's what the old man does. That's what the old lifestyle does. It doesn't get better on its own. It just doesn't get better. Left alone, we as a world don't get better. We're getting worse. Because as we grow older, we get worse. The word grows corrupt. It's all one word in the Greek. To waste, to shrivel or wither, to spoil, to ruin. The old man grows more and more spoiled every day. More and more corrupt every day. Remember, as new people, new creations, I'm one day newer. The old man is one day more corrupt. I'm one day more corrupt. It's one day more corrupt. Now, why does the old man grow corrupt? Oh, I think about spoiled. He's spoiled. He's ruined. Have you ever, have you ever gone, have you ever put on a piece of clothing that was spoiled? Maybe none of you have. Nobody, do you know what a, a, a spoiled piece of clothing is? How does it get spoiled, honey? It doesn't get dried all the way. If it doesn't get dried all the way, then all of a sudden it doesn't smell good. Or if, if you pulled something out of the fridge, it's spoiled. You know, it's got growing fur and all of that stuff, and you're going, it's just awful. I, I, I put on a spoiled shirt once, and I, and I got it on, and I'm going, man, you, you smell bad. You smell bad. I just wanted to get it off. I wish we could smell how we are when we're walking in the old man. It will make you sick. Everybody else smells it, but we have a hard time ourselves, it seems like. The old man, the old man. Why is he growing more and more corrupt? It says it here, because of lust. Lust, deceitful lust. The word deceitful, I thought for our today. Deceitful, to cause someone to have misleading or erroneous views concerning the truth. Is that not where we are today in our world? To cause someone, this is the Greek definition, to cause someone to have misleading or erroneous views concerning the truth. Misinformation, disinformation. The old man grows corrupt because of the lies of the devil. They're pervasive. They're misleading us to the truth. And that's what the world is doing today. We're being misled to where the truth really is. If you're waiting for somebody on the news to tell you what the truth is, you're missing it. You need to find the truth here. Amen. This is truth. This is what we need to be living. Not the lies of the devil that are out there that are misinformed. The word lust, a longing especially for that which is forbidden. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renewed, renovate, reform. Remember that we're demolishing the old. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. The new man is created by God to look like God, to act like God in his holiness and righteousness. Let me bring it to a close here. The new man does, not, does what God wants because he wants to. The old man does not do what God wants because he doesn't want to. Because of deceitful lusts. It's amazing what deceitful lusts, and they're all out there, and the enemy throws them everywhere. It's misinformation, it's disinformation about what's true, about what will really bring you happiness, about what love really is, about, about what it means to maybe give up in order to see somebody else grow up. Instead, we just walk all over people. Deceitful, deceitful. In Romans 7, it's very interesting because as I was doing this, there's only three spots where it talks about um, this new man. Another one's talking about a whole different thing between a Jew and, 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 and Gentile, about a new man. But here are the, the two main verses about putting on this, this new man that, that Christ provided for us. But my, I couldn't help but go back to Romans when Paul was looking and trying to figure out why. Why do I do what I do? In Romans 15, 7, 15, it says, For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I want to do, that I do not practice. 
But what I hate, that I do. Why do I do that? Verse 19. For the good that I will to do, I want to do it, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, I don't want to do that. That I practice. Can you see an old man versus new man here? Verse 22. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, the new man. It's delighting in the law. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. That's the old man. And I love verse 24. He just calls it like it is. Oh, wretched man that I am. I'm a wretched man. The word wretched, a person in a very unhappy or unfortunate state. Oh, wretched man that I am. Wretched. I just, that's a powerful word. And it's a true, true. I'm in this dilemma, old and new. Oh, wretched man that I am. And then he asks this question, who, who will deliver me from this body of death? Who would deliver me from this wretchedness, from this concept of this old man and new man? And I just, I'm walking in the wrong man. I want to be the new man, but I seem to be walking a lot in the old man. Who will deliver me from this body of death? And then he gives the answer. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's Jesus! He's the answer. He's the answer to the wretched man that we see ourselves. The old man. He's the one that can help us demolish some things. He's the one who puts us on this new clothing that we get to choose each and every morning. This new man, this kind man, this loving man, this man who wants to look like Jesus. It's because of Jesus. But you must choose daily what you want running your life. The old man or the new man. And Jesus made a way for the new man to win. It's a day of new things. God's called us to be new. A new, new year. I'm a new creation. But I'm also a new man because of what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross at Calvary. But each morning, I gotta choose what I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna walk in who I am, the new man? Or am I gonna dress down today? Am I gonna put on kindness? Am I gonna put on anger? Am I gonna put on humility? Am I gonna put on pride and arrogance? Am I gonna put on old? Am I gonna put on new? By the way, you need to take these off when you wear them. every day. Father, help us. Help us every day to realize what you did for us on the cross at Calvary to make us a brand new man. We don't have to stay angry. We don't have to stay unkind. We don't have to stay in those lusts. We don't have to. We don't have to. We don't have to. You gave us something new. And Lord, today, we just step in. First of all, we take off. It's not hard. Get rid of it. It stinks anyway. But Lord, today we put on the new man, the new garment, the new authority, the new mantle, the new power that you've you've given us because of the cross at Calvary. Help us, Lord, each and every day to walk holy for you. Amen. We're going to end with communion. Last week I... I talked a little bit about communion. (laughs) Honestly, I should have done that message, this one. But remember I said that it's spoken one time about the old covenant. It's fulfilled. The next time we see it, it's fulfilled when Jesus says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. I fulfilled it. 
by fulfilling it when he went to the cross, this cup, speaking of the judgment that was gonna happen, he was gonna take it on himself. He was gonna go to a cross. He was gonna be beaten. He was gonna die for us so that we could become brand spanking new. He drank that cup. And Lord, I'm so thankful you did. I'm so thankful, Lord, for what you did. Then he asked us to do one thing. Remember, remember me, remember me. Remember what I did for you to give you those new clothes. Remember what I did for you when I washed you up. Remember me when I picked you up out of the dirt. Remember, don't ever forget me. I'm your Lord, I'm your Savior. I'm your God. I'm the one who opens up heaven's door to you. Don't forget me. The Old Testament is full of people who forgot him. Oh, church, let us be a people who remembers him. We don't do this every, every, every Sunday. I don't want it to become a mundane thing we do, and we do it without ever thinking. I want communion to be a time when you come and you pull out that grape juice and you go, my gosh, that represents his blood. He, he, he poured it out. He fulfilled a new covenant promise to us that opened up, my gosh, this is so important here. He said, remember it in this element. Oh, that, that, that bread, that bread speaks of his body that was, that was beaten, that was bruised, that was tattered, that was ripped apart, put on a cross. We, we remember that. You come here, you take the bread and you go, I remember what it cost, Lord, for my sin. That's gonna help me next time I'm tempted because I realize you stood strong and I can. We take that bread, we take that grape juice and we thank him, we remember him. One translation says, affectionately remember. We remember you, Lord. Thank you, thank you for making me who I am today. But Lord, you have so much more you wanna do. Thank you, Lord. This is the Lord's table, it's not ours. So if you know what it means to be a Christian, you're more than welcome to come and partake of communion. But remember, really remember. Think of him, look at him. What he did for us. So we could wear these. Love you guys.